Good morning, everybody. Let me open the chat here. There we go. I have the chat open. So feel free to type in and say hello. Remember when you type in, Go ahead and click that button on the little drop down menu that says all panelists and attendees so everybody can see that you're here. So beautiful today, huh? Well, actually, it just got cloudy. It was beautifully sunny a moment ago. And now I look out the window and it's cloudy. But a nice, nice day. Nice, nice day. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. All right. So I've opened the chat. So go ahead and type in. Say hello. And there we go. And Carol's here from Carol in Pittsburgh. And from, oh, from Anne, excellent. And Priscilla, also in Pittsburgh. I love the Pittsburgh contingent. This is great. <laughs> and, uh, and uh oh, there we go. Now I can't read all of a sudden. Okay. Durham, North Carolina, and Marilyn is here. Yay. In, uh, oh gosh, all right. And Lee. Hi, Lee, and Darlene, and a different Marilyn, of course, and Bob is here, and Bob's in Oregon, so it's, it's early morning out there, isn't it? Okay, and Arlene in Toronto, and Kay's here. Hi, Kay, it's early where you are, too. <laughs> she's got sunshine, finally. She's in, in, uh, in Washington, so she's got uh, in Issaquah, so she's got sunshine. That's nice. Well, our son, our son will come back, I think. And uh, Joyce is here, and Mary, and Sarah, and Lynette. This is great. Okay, good. So let's get ready, and let's talk about today's warm-up. So um, once again, this is a warm-up with a focus. And uh, so we're going to be using one of the Kaleidoscope Practice Focus Techniques. And I'll be telling you more about that, although today's focus technique is continuity. And this is one that um, actually we all strive for, and lots of us don't know how to practice for. So I'll be able to show you a little bit about that today. But let's get started with the warm up, shall we? So we're in A minor today. So let, why don't we do, instead of starting on middle C just to warm up our fingers, let's start on the A below middle C. And once again, we'll just do some single finger warm ups because it's so good for you. So just some fourth fingers on that A below middle C. Just warm it up nicely. Make sure it's closing. Make sure that make sure that pinky closes. Yeah, you want that pinky to close. Oops, I was listening. There we go. Listen to your finger. Does it make the kind of sound you want? Does it sound relaxed? Does it feel relaxed? All right. Well, let's do some third finger. Remember, for an extra challenge, if you want, you can leave your fourth finger on the string and just play your third finger. If that's too hard for you, don't uh, you know that it, it is hard. It's a tendon stretcher. So um, feel free to put your fourth finger in your hand instead of on the string. And then we'll do some second finger. You can do the same thing. You can, that's not a very good string on my heart today. We have a, it's, it's humid here and we have a dehumidifier that we run, but even then, the harp senses the humidity in the air and the strings get, get wonky, get false a little bit. How about some thumb? So put, you know, put your fingers back on if you had them off and play your thumb. There you go. I was just looking at the list of attendees again here. You're all here from all this great stuff, all these great places, thinking how amazing is it that we've got all these different time zones represented? One more thumb here. There we go. And maybe just a one octave scale up and down. You guys are used to this drill by now, right? And down. Goodness, that third finger was unnecessarily noisy. Let's try it again. It just put a big accent on. Sure everything closes right it's that follow-through for your fingers that closing into your hand that gives you the fullest sound for the least effort which is definitely something we want huh all right how about some left hand 
I'm going to go an octave lower. If you want to stay up in that middle octave, you can. I'm going to go down here. So this is the A below the C below middle C. So that's that A and just some fourth fingers. My fourth finger callus is usually very buzzy. So, I mean, it just sounds hard sometimes. So I try to be careful about how I replace it. Oops, that was more of a buzz than I wanted. Kind of a funny angle on my arm today. It looks really fat. I'm not really that muscular. Funny camera angle, sorry about that. All right, how about some third finger? Once again, you can put your fourth finger back on to play your third finger or take it, leave it off the string in your hand if that's too difficult. Here we go. Oh, my third finger got stuck. I'm sorry. I had a knuckle collapse. That's not right. There we go. All right, how about some second finger? sound. All right, and how about some thumb? Oops, I hit the edge of my thumb that time. There we go. One more. And a one octave scale. I love when we're doing this because the comments are all quiet, which means you're all playing along. I love it. And let's do one more scale up and down because we can. Oops, not my cleanest replacing. And down. We'll do one more scale, but have your right hand join in. When we get to the bottom here, we'll do a hands together scale. Here we go. An octave apart. Okay, all right. I'm going to take one second and just adjust a couple of those. That's a little bit better. I'm not too thrilled with the Fs either. I think that one's all right. I think this one is just... That's a little bit better. Okay. Always nice to have a harp that's in tune. It's worth taking a minute to get it fixed. All right, here we go. Oh, good. So Nancy's here. Oh, and I see Carol Mask is here. I didn't see her before. Wonderful. Okay, great. Well, let's get moving. So warm-up pattern number 10. You know, I, I okay. These numbers are kind of arbitrary. <laughs> All right, so this one is all about intervals, but it's all about intervals in arpeggiation. Right, so last week we had one all about intervals played together. These are all intervals played apart. So, um, so you know, the fingering is there for you so that you don't have to think quite as hard. But we're gonna go through this and we'll go through it very slowly. There's sort of no point in doing this hand separately, is there? Because the hands don't actually play together. Although we might end up doing a little bit of that later on, we'll see. So here we go, from the beginning, a real, um, what should I say? A very relaxed tempo, just one and two and so it's nice and slow, okay? Re three and ready, go. One and two. Close your fingers. Try to place at the last second if you can so that you don't get too much buzzing.
let's right away, let's do it one more time. And then if you have questions, we'll talk about them after this time through. And then we have some work to do on this. All right, here we go from the beginning. Okay, three and ready, go. Now we'll go back. We're, we're going to do some more work on this. But do you have any questions about this first? Any questions about the about the fingering, about the best techniques to, to use to play this? I will tell you that a warm-up like this is really wonderful for um, getting all your fingers to close, right? And for that last minute, that last minute placing that I like to call dive bomb placing, right? You just kind of swoop in at the last second instead of getting it on the string and then you know placing and then playing just sort of that swoop in there's nothing that's very complicated about this but i do think and we'll try this this way in a moment that one of the the benefits you could get from this warm-up or one of the um let's see not necessarily benefits but one of the ways you could study it would be to play it at a much faster tempo and a much lighter dynamic so that you were really listening for the evenness of your fingers and for the just absolute, you know, even in tone and dynamic all the way across. Maybe a nice gradual crescendo, diminuendo. So I think it works really well like that um, and a great way to, to practice that kind of fluidity. And that goes with the continuity idea we're talking about. Let's see. Uh, Jean says, this was so helpful to get the fingers to not make jerky sound. Yeah, that's right. This will show you instantly if, you're, if your rhythm isn't even, right? <laughs> you know, you just want it nice and smooth and very fluid, very even, rhythmically, dynamically, tone-wise, all that stuff. That's what you're looking for here. So, okay, well, let's talk a little bit then about how you can use this and to develop continuity or how you can develop continuity in everything or anything that you play. So continuity is really about the flow of the music. And I find that this is something that a lot of people forget to practice. They work on their spots, on these things that are hard, and they, you know, they work in sections. And all of this is good. I mean, I have my students work this way all the time. I work that way all the time. Spot practice, sections, big sections, little sections, all that kind of stuff. But until you can have the piece flow from beginning to end, you don't have continuity, you don't have a really convincing or um, rewarding to play, uh, perform, right? So, you know, you need to really be able to make the piece one entity the way it was imagined or composed from beginning to end. I mean, granted, there might be stops, there might be, you know, sections that do separate themselves in your piece. And that's, you know, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the kind of continuity that goes along and then stops <laughs> and starts again. We're talking about hesitations. We're talking about stumbles. We're talking about um, 
just awkward transitions. And one of the places these, these awkwardnesses often happen is going from one staff to the next, from one line to the next, like the end of the first line to the beginning of the second line kind of thing. You've probably gotten stuck there, um, maybe not in this warm up, but in other pieces that you've played before. So let's, I'm going to show you a technique for getting around that, for practicing continuity with that end in mind. So what we're going to do is play, indeed, little sections of this warm-up, but we're going to do them with the idea that we want to make sure that we're going to move our eyes and our fingers smoothly from the end of one line to the beginning of the next and not have a break or a glitch or a hesitation or a stumble at that point. So what I'd like you to do, what we will do right now, is start at the beginning of measure three. So that's the third measure on the first line. And we're going to play from measure three all the way through the end of measure five. Okay, so we'll play measure three, measure four, and measure five without stopping. And the idea, of course, is not to have any hesitation or fumble or stumble as you go from the end of measure four at the top of the first, at the end of the first line to the beginning of measure five. We want that to be nice and smooth. So let's, you might not have any problem with it at this tempo, but we'll play with the tempo a little bit too and see if we can still get that transition to work. So starting in measure three, the same tempo we were going, okay? Nice slow eighth note. So this is measures three, four, and five only. Three, and ready, go. One, two, three, four, one, two. Now you have plenty of time to look ahead now so that there's no hesitation there, yeah? Let's try it again. Just those three measures. That's all we're doing right now. Same thing from measure three, okay? Ready, go. One, two, three. there I didn't want my second finger now let's just pick up the tempo a little bit and see if we can still keep that smooth transition so from measure three again same thing but we'll go three and four and one two three four one two three four smoothly across here there you go yeah let's do it again same thing same tempo three and four and one two three four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the idea here is that that kind of practice should really help you be able to play the whole thing more smoothly. Let's do the next line by line transition. So we'll start in the middle of the second line on measure five, six, seven, starts with the low D here, and we'll play measure seven and eight and nine, which is the first measure on the third line. That same kind of tempo, I think, I don't think we need to go too much slower, do we? So how about three and four? Oh, oh I'm sorry, this is measure seven, okay? Three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, now you, this is a slightly more difficult transition just because the notes in measures seven and eight are a little bit less predictable than the ones we had up at the top. So let's do that again, starting in measure seven. Our idea is to get that continuity, to get that flow. Measure seven, eight, and nine all together, all right? Three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, can see how this would be important. Remember how I played it for you a little while ago when it was faster and even? You can see how kind of continuity practice and practicing those transitions is really, would be really helpful for being able to play it at that faster speed. So once again, let's pick up the tempo of these measures just a little bit. So starting in measure seven again. Okay, let's see. Three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, Let's do it again. Same thing, measure seven. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Good. 
And now guess what we're going to do? We're going to, we're going to do from measure 10, the second measure on the third line, all the way to the end. Because there are plenty of places in here that a person could stumble or get lost, right? So let's do from measure 10 all the way to the end with the particular emphasis of continuing, of keeping the flow, making sure that we get across all those bar lines and uh, you know all those octave transitions seamlessly. Let's go back to our slower tempo to start. Sort of, we're starting in bar 10 here, right? It's got an E in the left hand to start. So three and four and one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. There you go. Let's do it again, shall we? Same thing, measure ten. Three, four, one, two, three. bit faster. Same place, measure 10. Three, four, one, two, 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 three, four. And we'll do it again. Same thing, same speed. Measure 10. Three, four, one, two, 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 three, four. Now let's keep that same speed, go back to the beginning, and we're going to play the whole thing through. Remember, our emphasis this time is continuity. So don't stop right? Oh, you're going to follow me anyway. I promise I won't stop. So you're not worried about, um, you know, the fingering details right now. You're not worried about that. Your main, I mean, we want them to be correct, obviously, but your main focus is going to be to keep that flow. So let's do that all the way from the beginning to the end. Are you ready from the beginning? Okay. Three, four, one, two, 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 three. Now, for those of you who are ready for it, and I bet you all are, let's go a little faster. Okay? Same idea. Keeping the continuity. That's what we're looking for. All right. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Remember to look ahead when you need to. Four, one. What comes next, correct? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Oops. Now, before we go back, we're going to do that one more time at that speed. Before we go back and do that, I want you to remember that if you make a mistake, your eye can't go backward to look for what the mistake was. Your thinking can't go backward for trying to figure out what that mistake was. You have to keep moving forward. And that is the secret to continuity. That's the secret to flow. That's the secret to being able to play as opposed to just practice. So let's go again from the beginning. Remember, it's all about just keeping going, okay? Three, four, one, two, 
Okay, so let, let me get some comments, questions, whatever is going on for you here. Let's see, Mary is saying good morning from Florida and good morning back to you, Mary. So um, was, this, was this helpful? Do you see how continuity might work? I mean, there are other ways to, uh, to practice for continuity depending on what, on what you're doing, but those transitions, those movements from one technique, you know, one sort of this group of notes to that group of notes or from as we did today from one staff line to the next those transitions can be places where we stumble and things fall apart and we end up practicing in hesitations and to get those out and to get those practiced out is just really really important so that's um this was sort of an easy way to work at that um <laughs> was this helpful at all did you do you see how this let's see uh, Marilyn says, very good technique, especially the clue to not look back. Yeah. Yes. Remember that, that music happens over time, right? What's important about music is not the beautiful note. And, um, you know, the, the wonderful quote aside, it's not even that music is happening in the space between the notes. What's really happening is that music is happening over time and time goes forward, you know, You've got people, you know, tapping their foot, at least in their mind, right? I mean, that, that pulse is happening. It's inexorable, yes, to use one of those wonderful words. So, you know, it's just going to keep on going, and you have to keep on going with it. There's no time to think backward, no time to look back. There's a time to let all that go and move on forward. Okay, so <laughs> Susan says, you're always very helpful. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. Um, and uh, Joanne says, I feel this is also great for improvisation on chord backgrounds. Yeah, this will be perfect for something like that. Absolutely. Uh, great tip. Very, very helpful, says Mary. Let's see. Uh, Jennifer says, my sight reading must really be stinky. <laughs> I don't know why. The slowest tempo was too fast for me to keep up kept going. Uh, let's talk about that in just a moment. Let me go through a couple other comments. Looking ahead is so important, says Nancy. Roberta says, have to use the same technique with piano. This was awesome. Great. Well, yeah, it works for anything. Remember, it, it's just, it's keeping going. Um, Nancy says she needs to practice sight reading and speed. Um, <laughs> Uh, Carol says, I continue to use this even for pieces in the finish stage, like the Salzedo Menuet. Yeah, that's right. You, making those transitions, practicing for continuity is something that you never let go of. Um, Debbie says, page turns are always a fumble. They should not be. Page turns should never be a fumble. They need to be practiced in. And, um, you know, be sure that you just have enough time to do it or that you spread three pages out or that you use, uh, you know, a, a foot pedal to turn pages electronically or something like that. So um, page turns can be planned out. And sometimes it takes a little bit of cutting and pasting maybe to say, oh, I could turn after the third line, but not after the fourth line. And so I could, you know, put that at the top of the next page and then I could turn. But page turns should in an, in an ideal world, page turns should be soundless and nearly invisible. Not that you have to hide your motion, but that they shouldn't be vicious and distracting like that. They need to be not distracting from the performance. Okay, let's see. Pam says she sews, she finds it hard to keep the left hand going. Okay, well, let's let we can talk about that a little bit because that's going to fit in with what I want to talk to Jennifer about. Um, Darlene's working on her sight reading. Nancy said the slowest was okay, but I was just finishing the first when you were already starting the next. Well, yeah, if you weren't, yeah, that's that's the disadvantage of being on a Zoom instead of in person, right? I can't, 
I can't hear where you all are to make sure that you're keeping up. Sorry about that. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, Jennifer thinking that her sight reading is stinky and Pam thinking that it was hard to keep up with the left hand. Because I didn't, I didn't warn you about what's tricky about this kind of a pattern and why this pattern is worth practicing. What I didn't warn you about is that you can't read it the way it's written. If you read left, right, then left, then right, and you're reading sort of sequentially like that, it's going to really, really slow you down and keep you slow. So, um, and that's, and if your left hand reading is slower than your right hand, Pam, if, you know, bass clef, excuse me, it's allergies again. If bass clef is not quite so, quite so comfortable for you, then it would be the left hand that starts to drag. So ideally what you should, and please take that word seriously, in an ideal world, right? The, 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 the goal we're all aiming for, the pinnacle of achievement, which means you don't have to be there today, right? okay, is to be able to see the entire measure, at least, as a group. You wanna be able to see like maybe even that first right hand and the following left hand as a group so that you're, you're seeing how those notes relate to each other and you're looking at both stabs at once, not down and up and down and up and down and up, which is the order they're in in this particular piece, right? I mean, in another piece, it could have been the other way, right? The right hand could have been first. Um, that would probably be warm-up pattern 10B. <laughs> so, but you're not reading just one line and trying to read two lines at once, but that you're reading both lines together. So that's really what's important about this, that you get, that you're looking at the entire measure, both lines, and looking at it that way. Now, I will show you a, a way to practice this or any other piece that will help you with, um, it's, uh, it's sort of a, a hands not quite together, hands not quite separately technique. And, and we'll do it right now. And you'll find that it is a challenge, but what it does is help you be very, very intentional about where you're reading and how you're reading. And it's very helpful. Now, for this, what we're going to do is we're going to alternate measure by measure. This is also a continuity technique, by the way. So we're going to read the left hand and play, read and play the left hand in the first measure, then the right hand in the next measure. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two three. So we're going to alternate and um, I will count carefully for you and we'll go a little bit slower, but the idea is Every other measure, you read the left hand, and then on the, other, on the opposite measures, you read the right hand. So we'll read the, right, the left hand for the first measure, the right hand for the second measure, the left hand for the third measure, the right hand for the fourth measure. Notice that you're going to have sort of two beats rest as you go between a left hand and a right hand measure, and then no beats rest going the other way around. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now this works for any piece and in most pieces where hands are going more at the same time, um, it's a little bit easier, but let's try this, okay? And we'll go fairly slowly, but notice how it's going to push your reading in a different way. And I know I was just talking about reading the music as, as a group, as both staves instead of one at a time. But when you force yourself to read one at a time, you can feel a little bit about what it is that you're trying to do when you do that by accident, as opposed to on purpose. Um, that may not have been my most articulate explanation, but we'll come back and I'll see if I can say it a little bit better for you. In the meantime, let's try this through, okay? So uh, what's interesting about this is that um, you might as well go ahead and play that, uh, that left hand note at the end. It's technically a right hand measure, but we'll play it anyway. <laughs> 
All right, so here we go. We're starting with left hand. I'm gonna get my right hand on for the second measure because I believe in preparation. So my right hand's ready to play measure two, but my left hand will play in measure one. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 One. Kind of wild, huh? Now, before we talk about that, let's go back and let's do it the other way. Your right hand will play in the first measure, your left hand in the second. All right, here we go. One, two, three. We start with a rest and rest. Two, three, four. One, 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 two, three, four. Three, four, one, two, 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 three, four, one. It's a wild reading experience, isn't it? Makes it so much easier to go back and read both stabs simultaneously. Um, it's a good practice. Let's see what we have here. And Nancy says, I would not be able to keep up. Uh, can't watch the harp, it's too crowded a space, etc. Okay, I can read, can read sight, read slowly, and this warm up is indispensable. Well, that's good. I like being indispensable. Darlene enjoyed that. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think it's kind of fun. It's, it's a little brain twister in the morning, isn't it? Now, so let's go back and let's do the whole, the whole uh, warm up one more time, but playing both hands. Let me see. It was mind blowing, says Priscilla. Yeah, it is kind of mind blowing. Let's go back and let's do it all both hands the way it's written. So we can just sort of clear out the cobwebs a little bit. Okay. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three. Much easier that way, isn't it? <laughs> it's great practice. It's very, very helpful. Uh, Jennifer says, I'm going to try that left hand, right hand split on everything today. Yeah, it's very informative and it really just, it helps you with your reading because you, when you're doing it on purpose instead of doing it by accident, it can help you, you know, be a little bit more aware of how you're reading and it can help you sort of correct that. Uh, Pam says, yes, that helped. Good, good, excellent. Uh, Nancy says she watches and takes notes from her small apartment, but there was something else. Let me see. Kay says, hearing the faster pace is helpful to aim for. Also, the comments about reading by measure is a new concept. Yeah, as um, Salzedo used to say, and of course, uh, you know, there are, um, you know, you can imagine that there may be a degree of hyperbole in there a little bit, but um, he used to say that uh, you, you were supposed to read four measures ahead. So in order for you, now granted this would, you know, depend on exactly how long those measures were because some measures are longer than others with more notes, right? But the idea that you can be catching that many measures at a glance 
is really what um, what a lot of that plays to. It's not just reading ahead. It's being able to look at that entire measure or two measures or line and see what's there as a group instead of seeing a bunch of individual notes. And that's how you get to faster reading, believe it or not. Uh, Darlene says she has a new etude. This is good. Carol says, great for, this exercise is great for seeing when I'm not playing evenly. Yeah, it, it does that. Susan says, thank you, Anne. I'm ju really just learning to sight read. And the idea of reading by measure is very helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's what you want to do. And of course, it's even better if you can read that measure and just across the bar line, you know, just across the bar line is even better because that, um, that ends you, uh, <laughs> you know, that keeps you from like getting to that wall that the bar line looks like. Oh, Anne is saying, yes, yeah, she says, thank you for the tuneful practice piece for this longest day weekend. Yeah, we are at midsummer, aren't we? So uh, the longest day, and she's in British Columbia, so she's a little bit, a little bit further north than I am and is able to see an even longer day. Helpful for topography. Yes, it is, Jean, absolutely. That's exactly what, that's, what it's great for, right? Jennifer says she always has a harder time reading when there are big spaces between the notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, continuity is a nice thing. And there's nothing, because all these groups are separate, you can't place them. You can't depend on your placing. You have to depend on your reading. And then the accuracy in getting to those notes, the topography aspect of it, as Jean said, yeah? Uh, okay, yeah. Reading across the bar line is the sticking point, says Nancy. Well, yeah. The bar line is not a wall. It's merely there to show you when the next repeating pattern of meter starts. So don't, you know, always don't, you can't treat it like a, like a, you know, <laughs> like like one of those mime walls you, can, you know you can't treat it that way you have to play past it all the time and uh who is this oh it looks like janice i can't read it oh it's joyce uh this will be this will be useful good 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 i'm so glad oh, oh there it is it is janice okay and uh <laughs> Oh, I am just like not reading today. Jane says the high note in measure six trips me up. Well, you know, it's only a G. What can I say? If you, well, I will tell you this, since you know that that trips you up, you know at the beginning of that measure or by the end of the measure before that you need to be looking ahead for it, right? It's one thing to sight read it when it comes up out of the blue, but now that you know that it's there, the idea is to remember ahead of time to look for it. And so that's part of that. Roberta says, my goal is to play at a good pace with fewer mistakes each time. It's great. Well, there you go. All right. So before I leave you for today, because of course we have something new to do next week, we're going to play, I, I will play it at that faster tempo again, not super duper fast, but pretty fast. So you can just see what you want to do. Remember, you can always drop out a hand or drop out a line and get back in there. But for those of you who want a speed challenge to get your Friday off to the right start, let's try something about like that, a nice flow to it, huh? All right. So let's give this a shot, shall we? All right. You ready? All set? Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. that way. Right? <laughs> uh, Nancy managed two bars at that speed. Good for you. Two bars is good. Next time you can do three. <laughs> Excellent. But you got to cross one bar line, didn't you? So that's also good. Excellent. All right. So that's it for this week and for this warm up. We have another warm up coming up next week with a focus and our focus will be control, which is probably unless you are 
pretty well aware of all my kaleidoscope practice stuff, you are probably thinking of control a little bit differently than I do. So, um, so we'll be talking about that next week with a different kind of warm-up, lots of arpeggios next week. So it's kind of a nice little warm-up too. So I hope you enjoy that one. And I am so glad you joined me on this call today. I look forward to talking with you all next week. So have a wonderful week until I see you again. And uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Okay. Thanks, everybody. See you. I'm glad you really enjoyed it, Janice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arlene. Oh, good to see you here. All right. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. All right, Roberta. Oh, you're welcome too. Excellent. Okay, good. Wonderful. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. See you soon. Bye.